Hey, good morning, friends in Christ. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, hope that you're having a great day so far. Uh, we pray God's blessings upon you now and always. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you watched the the big game last night, hope, hope that you had fun. Uh, if you watched it by yourselves or surrounded by family or friends, uh, we pray that you had a good time last night. Uh, we, in our house, we'll be honest, my wife and I, we watched the Super Bowl with some friends. We, we just enjoyed it for the game that it was. Um, we're a baseball household, so we kind of, once the Super Bowl was over, we were like, all right, just a couple more months until baseball is right around the corner. So that's uh, that's what we're looking forward to. Let us know, are you uh, more sad that football is over, or maybe you like baseball or summer? Maybe you're more excited that summer's on its way. I think that's something we could all uh, get behind, right? So just good morning to everybody. Good morning to those of you joining us. Uh, today, we are going to continue walking through uh, Luther's small catechism and looking through uh, the things that we believe as Lutheran Christians. And we are going to wrap up today. We're going to wrap up uh, looking at the Apostles' Creed. We're going to take a look at the third article, right? The Apostles' Creed is broken down into three articles, and each article deals with a person of the Holy Trinity. So we looked at God the Father. We looked at God the Son, also Jesus. And today we're going to take a look at the third article, the article and the triune, the, the final person of the Trinity in the Holy Spirit. So without further ado, like I said, I've got my catechism right here. If you've got a catechism, you can follow along. If you have a Bible, we're going to kind of, like I said, hop around a little bit in our Bible verses. So let's just take a look at the third article and let's take a look at its meaning. Third article, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So that's where the article, or the Apostles' Creed, ends, right? We see that amen, and it's like, okay, creed's over. Well, what does it mean? What does it mean for us to believe that the Holy Spirit is God, that the Holy Spirit inspires us and creates faith in our hearts? Well, we have a pretty long explanation for uh, the third article of the Creed. So I'm just going to read <clears throat> Luther's explanation of what we believe in the Holy Spirit. What does this mean? It means, I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. Right? We have sin. We cannot come to Jesus because of our sin, but that's where the Holy Spirit intercedes for us and steps in. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In this same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies. Sanctifies is a word that means makes holy or sets apart the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, all right, so when Jesus comes back, on the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ this is most certainly true. So again, it's a shorter article in terms of words, but there's a lot going on here. So what does it mean for us as Christians that we believe the Holy Spirit is the third person of our triune God? Well, what it means is that he is God and that his role and his responsibility and the work that he does is that he creates faith in the hearts of all who believe <laughs> And he does that through the word of God, right? So the word of God is either read or it's preached or it's internalized, right? We hear it, we intake it, and then it's the working of the Holy Spirit that brings us to faith in Jesus and that he is the one that creates us or excuse me, creates faith in us. And then that faith is what saves us as it says in Ephesians 2, right? For it is by grace through faith that we have been saved, not because of our works, not because of anything we can do but because of what the Holy Spirit has done in our hearts to save us and to create faith in our hearts. So we can, as Luther says right here, so we can come to Jesus. So we can have faith in him and have faith in his death and resurrection for the forgiveness of our, our, of our sins. <clears throat> so there's a lot of uh, end times language, especially uh, in the last half of this explanation, right? On the last day, he will raise my body he will raise all the dead. Okay. He'll raise all the dead. Those who have 
fallen asleep in Jesus, as well as those who have not believed in Jesus. Everybody gets a resurrection. But here's the caveat, right? Will all the dead be raised and go to heaven? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Jesus talks about uh, how at the last day, he's going to know the people and the, the souls who have faith in him. And those who believe in Jesus as Savior are going to go with him uh, to be with him in the new heaven and new earth. And those who don't, those who those dead who are raised but who don't believe in Jesus, unfortunately, they're going to be sent to hell. They're going to be sent uh, away and they're not going to join Jesus in the new heaven and the new earth. Which, again, is really, really imperative that for us as Christians today, we need to spread the gospel, we need to live lives of salt and light, and that we continue to make disciples so that way as many people as possible will be with Jesus and with all the believers in heaven and spend eternity with him. So, <clears throat> right, it says here, uh, what happens on the last day to those who reject Christ or who, or who are unbelievers? Uh, unfortunately, they're sentenced to an eternal death. They're sentenced to forever or eternity apart from Jesus, right? And unfortunately, we know this side of heaven, a consequence of, of sin is death. So in some way, shape, or form, right, until Jesus comes back, everybody who's alive will die. We will fall asleep, as the Apostle Paul says. But we, Paul calls death sleep for a reason. This death, this first death, is temporary, because when Jesus comes back, he's going to raise us on the last day. And those who have faith in Jesus are going to be with him forever. It's a matter of perspective. We also confront the reality of, yeah, death is a consequence of sin, but there is forgiveness of our sins in our Savior Jesus. So for those who believe in Jesus, we don't need to be afraid of death. We don't need to be afraid of what happens after I die. What, where am I going to go after I die? Because it's not about what we've done to to make things right it's about what jesus has done for us on the cross in the resurrection to make us right in to make us right with god and to redeem and restore that relationship and so this is something that a lot of people maybe get a, a little afraid of what happens on the last day what will happen to me when i'm raised on the last day well uh first corinthians 15 I'm not going to go through the whole chapter, but that's a great chapter for us to learn what does happen to us on the last day. Well, we're resurrected from the dead. We're given bodies like that of Jesus, right? Resurrected bodies. And then those who have faith and believe in Jesus, we're going to be, we're going to be perfect. We're going to be without sin. We're going to be with him forever. We're going to be, we're going to be like Jesus and we're going to be with Jesus and all the believers who have gone before us, as well as those who are who are still alive when Jesus does come back. And everything's going to be better than it was in creation before sin. That sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? That's the gift that we have in Jesus. And that's the gift that he made possible for us. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit is that all people, right, all people would come to saving faith in Jesus. Unfortunately, scripture says that when Jesus does come back, not everybody's going to believe. But the work of the Holy Spirit says, hey, we have a job to do. We have a, we have a great blessing and great opportunity to live lives pointing people to Jesus. And that's not our work. It's not about the words that we say or the credit that we take for ourselves. That's the Holy Spirit working in and through us giving us the words to speak in those conversations and in those moments so that way we point people to the hope and the glory and the grace that we have in our Savior Jesus. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's what God is doing in and now, and that's the work that he's going to do until Jesus comes back. So it can almost feel maybe sometimes like we're pounding sand or that, oh, this isn't working, but we know. That even when we can't see the full picture or we can't see everything going on uh, in the world or in the hearts of the people we talk with, we know that God is working. We know that he never slumbers. He never takes breaks. We know that God is always working. And our prayer, right, the prayer of the church is that wouldn't it be great 
if when Jesus does come back, the entire earth, <clears throat> we know that the entire earth will bow and acknowledge him as Lord. But wouldn't it be great if the entire earth bowed and the entire earth had faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? That's the work that we have been called to and we get to partner with Jesus in accomplishing. But we know the responsibility is not on us to accomplish it. It's all on Jesus and it's all on the work of the Holy Spirit to create and sustain those in the faith until Jesus comes back. <clears throat> so church, that's all that we've got for you. Uh, we're going to continue walking through our devotions and we're going to continue in the word of God, but just want to wish you a blessed Monday. Uh, hope that you have a great day so far and hope that the rest of your day and the rest of your week is a blessing. We're so ex we're really, really excited. Sun or Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. So we're getting ready to launch into the season of Lent. We've got our Ash Wednesday services uh, this Wednesday, 430 and 630 down in the worship center. So we'd love to and invite you to join us for those services as we launch into the season of Lent, as we get ready to follow Jesus to the cross and ultimately follow him out of the tomb in the resurrection as we celebrate and look forward to Easter. So have a great rest of your day. God's blessings on your Monday, and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.